Dr. Chen, this video is about my preoperative visit. Again, this video is not meant as a replacement for that visit. Rather, we're covering a lot of material, and I know it's just you're just not going to remember everything. Yes, there are written instructions, but I thought this would be helpful to put this in a video format so that you can watch it. So, your surgery is coming up. You're doing great but I fully expect you to be completely stressed out, and that's just normal human reaction. Anxiety level for most people, very high at this point. Again, rather than fighting it, you just have to say, look, I'm having surgery, of course I'm gonna be anxious, it's okay. The very thing that you're anxious about, the surgery itself, really is gonna be the easiest part of this whole thing, because with the, the way the anesthesia is done these days, you're gonna close your eyes, you're going to open your eyes and you'll be done. So the reality is this period, preoperative visit to the surgery is the most anxiety provoking time period. So just expect that. Now, as far as medications, um, there are three medications that I use after the surgery. There's usually a, some form of narcotic pain pills. Uh, the problem with that is that it's a narcotic, as in it's going to cause constipation, nausea and vomiting are possible. So the overall philosophy is that we want to try to minimize the use of it, and the overall, the less of that you use, better your recovery is going to be. However, rather than trying to tell you to just suffer through a lot of pain, I actually put you on second type of a pain medication, which is not a narcotic. It's called Celebrex. The only people that do not get this medication are those that are allergic to sulfa. Uh, this is a non-narcotic medication, so there is no nausea, vomiting, constipation issues. Uh, this is a once a day drug, so if you take two of these in the morning, for the next 24 hours, you're gonna get the same amount of pain relief as taking Advil, aspirin, Motrin every six hours around the clock. So it's really a helpful drug. Uh, unlike those other medications that I just mentioned, there's really no bleeding associated with this medication, so it can be used safely. I've had great luck with this medicine. So I'm giving you 10 pills altogether. You'll start taking two pills in the morning, starting the morning of surgery before you come in. Because you're having surgery just with little sips of water, and after the surgery, you know, don't take it on an empty stomach, but that will help you with your post-operative pain. The other thing that I use is the uh, transderm patch, which is a sea sickness patch. Uh, you'll be placing one patch, you peel off the backing, put it behind the ear, again, before you come in, and the anti-nausea effect lasts three days. Uh, it is usually very well tolerated. Um, a lot of people on cruise ships use it. I've used it uh, when I've gone fishing in the past, so I know exactly what it does. It gives you dry mouth, um, and it's not the type of dry mouth that drinking a little bit more will make it go away, so it's just expected. The other common side effect is that it can cause blurred vision, which can be scary, but again, it's nothing to be scared about. It's coming from the patch. It will go away once the patch comes off. What happens is that usually one pupil will get wider and that causes blurred vision. Um, so typically what I ask patients to do is the day after your surgery, see how you feel. If you're doing great with no hint of nausea or vomiting, but dry mouth and or blurred vision bother you a lot, take the patch off and see how you do without it. On the other hand, if you've already vomited or you feel like you're gonna vomit, dry mouth and or blurred vision is not worth risking throwing up because throwing up is not only uncomfortable, but it also raises your blood pressure, so you're more likely to bleed internally at the site of the surgery. Because of that potential, I'm also giving you several other anti-nausea medications through your IV, as will the anesthesiologist. It's that we're gonna throw the whole kitchen sink at you. So most people do well, few that do not usually commit one of two mistakes that we've warned them about. Mistake number one, first 48 hours, you're not eating anything heavy, spicy, or greasy. You're sticking to really simple, bland, boring, sick people food like toast, crackers, jello, broth, plain rice, bananas, and that's really about it. 
Even some soups can cause problems, especially if it's commercially made because it has a lot of fat to make it taste good. So it's, it's something that you should stay away from. Also, a lot of people ask about smoothies and powders. Again, we just want to stay away from those type of things. Uh, the other mistake, taking pills on an empty stomach, especially the narcotic pain medications that will get you every single time. Every surgery has similar infection, bleeding, blood clot risks. Uh, I follow national guidelines at this point. Everyone gets a dose of IV antibiotics during the surgery, but we no longer do antibiotic pills because that has been proven to be not beneficial. The risk of bleeding is usually very low, usually less than 1%. As long as you don't have any underlying bleeding tendencies, as long as you're not vomiting, as long as you're careful with arm movements, that risk is very low. Only blood clots. Main thing we want to do is we want to get your leg muscles moving. Because when leg muscles move, blood tends to move in your legs and the risk of getting clot is very low. It's kind of like going on a long plane ride. What you don't do is just sit in your chair the entire flight without moving, uh, up and down the aisle, walking. You're supposed to be doing the same thing after the surgery. What I don't want you to be doing is staying in bed 24 hours. Yes, at nighttime you don't need to get up and walk, but during daytime, you know, walk around a little bit, go sit outside, even go for a slow walk. And if you do find yourself sitting down for long periods of time, move your ankles, move your knees. As long as your leg muscles are moving, you're not going to get in trouble. Now, after the surgery, you're all wrapped up. There is nothing for you to change or clean until you come back and see me on that first visit. Your family member will be given instructions on how to empty the drains, and we use that drainage amount to determine when the drains are coming out. And let them know it's a very simple process. It's not anything they need to be worried about or stressed over. It's really easy. When you come back to the office, you get your implants back. I always take pictures of your implants and capsules. You can have a copy of that as well. After that visit is when you're starting to shower. So we'll go over all the showering instructions again when you come back, but just so that you're prepared, you'll be applying antibiotic ointment and wearing bras afterwards. So make sure you have those ready to go. You don't have to bring them to the surgery center. You don't have to bring them to the office. It's for you to start using after you shower after that first visit. Because you're not going to be showering until the second post-operative day or later, I want you to shower the morning of surgery. You can use whatever shampoo and soap you'd normally use. We don't want you using any lotion, moisturizer, deodorant, uh, no makeup, leave all your valuables and jewelries at home. I do let patients keep their underwear and pants on as long as it's loose um, and there's no metal. Usually, pajamas and sweatpants seem to work well. The morning of surgery, it will take me a few minutes to put all my markings. At that point, you're still wide awake and alert. So any questions you have at this point going forward until the day of the surgery, write it down, bring it with you. We'll have another chance to go over everything.